start it up. Kevin is waving at me to start up. So we're going to start. Ooh, look at this. I have. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ooh. The meeting will return to order. That's so cool. Okay, but you're covering up my bingo card. Oh, I'm sorry. It is the chair's intent to address the four and six motion first, and then the EPA mo EPH motion. Is there any objection to that order? Se seeing none, I will recognize the makers of the four and six motion for a very brief discussion of how their motion works, and then uh, to yield to questions in the order recognized by the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Chris Garum. I am the head cook and bottle washer of four and six. Um, how it works is very simple. Um, everyone votes for an unlisted er, an unranked list of nominees, four per category. The administrators take the top six plus any ties and put them on the final ballot. We, we vote on the final ballot the same way we do everything else. We do it with, on preferential. Uh, there is nothing magical about the numbers four or six. Uh, if you like a different number, we can certainly talk about that. Uh, you know, three and three and ten, or five and ten, or whatever whatever makes sense. Um, the intent uh, the intent of the amendment. Uh, in, in, in large part is we have where there's two intents. The first intent is number one, there are a lot of people who when they see this <coughs> list that they've, they've got to fill out, think they've got to fill out five titles, they throw their reading list at the title. They throw everything they've ever read in that category or every fan writer they know in that category and they throw it in there. Being a, a explicit less than the number we're going to actually vote on I think gives us the signal that says you can list the ones you actually like as opposed to just everyone you ever read. The second thing is uh, those folks who, who shall not be named came up with a slate and that slate of about 250 voters or about 20 percent of the nominators, people who voted to nominate, locked everything up. If you break it up in a slate, if you break up the number of nominations and make it different than the number of finalists, you force a slate to either concede part of the slate, part of the final ballot, or you force them to try to split their forces in half, which dilutes their ability to do something. Um, so that's kind of how it would work. As far as administration, I can't see it being any more difficult than the current administration. It does not disenfranchise anybody. Everyone still gets to vote. Um, everyone still gets to vote on the finalists. Um, I guess I want to yield to questions at this point. Is there any member with a question? Uh, do you need the roving mic? I, uh, Mr. No, just go ahead. Yeah. Um, I wish to amend the motion. Uh, my name is Milt Stevens, Mr. Chairman. All right, state my uh, suggested amendment. Yes. Uh, to change the number four to five. Motions on the uh, wording of the motions are not in order. That is substantive debate and will be heard on Sunday when the motion comes up for a sub amend the, uh... Yes. <laughs> the chair recognizes Kevin Stanley. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do believe that it, Kevin Stan, no, it's good. <laughs> don't use up your 30 minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do believe it would be in order for the Committee of the Whole to recommend that the meeting make an, uh, uh, amend the motion in such a way. So I do believe the members actually proposing that, uh, that we adopt a recommendation in our report to the main meeting that we amend the motion by substituting five and eight for four and six. Is that perhaps correct what it was? And I do second the member's motion. If the point of order is held well taken. I was really trying not to get into numbers game right now, but 
the point of order is well taken um, if the member would like to restate the numbers that he would like the committee to report back with uh, to substitute the number four for five and the number six for eight another way, way around yes eight for six eight for six um, Seeing as how this is a committee of the whole, I'm going to ask if there is any objection to reporting back with that as a change. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I suggest that I suspect there's there are several other people who have numbers. Which is why I didn't want to get into this. Well, yeah, I, uh, I agree, Mr. Chair, but maybe we ought to just take all the numbers and, and see what kind of shakes out. The, <laughs> the chair is going to ask that any members who wish to change numbers provide them to the chair at the close of this discussion, since I assume we are going to recess between now and the other part of the meeting, and I will report back to the committee. Uh, or to the business meeting with the full list of proposed numbers. For what purpose does Mr. Breitbart rise? Uh, Seth Breitbart, I wish to propose an amendment by substitution to that amendment to say that this committee of the whole reports back that the set of numbers should be set by fill in the blanks procedure at the regular business meeting, since that's going to happen anyway, no matter what we report. I will ask for an objection to the motion. Seeing none, that is adopted. We will report back. Uh, to that the main bi main business meeting should approach the numbers as a fill in the blank system. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think if there's any other questions on the, on how we do things, I think we can have some questions. So. Hi, right, David Clements. Um, a question for the speaker. If the intent of this um, amendment, I believe that's the correct term, um, is to defeat block voting, um, I am uncertain that uh, a short list, a list of finalists that is two-thirds dominated by a block, where you know, they all decide to vote for four works, we get left with two others which are not part of a block. I don't think that achieves things quite as well as many of us, many of us might wish. We would end up with a situation that's anomalous to, analogous to the novel shortlist this year, which is still problematic even though several non-affected um, works are on that shortlist. I have a point well taken. The, 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 the point well taken. I think the important factor to consider is, is the ratio. Um, you know, what ratio do you feel comfortable with? How many, you know, non-slate works you, you do want? I also think it's important to note that the uh, slate people do not have a complete control of their, it's not a party discipline where they can make people vote the way they want. There was a 25% runoff between the first and the, and the fifth work in the short fiction slates. So they, they do have some problems of their own as far as internal um, organization, for lack of a better word. Um, Very quickly, uh, it is the opinion of the chair that the fill in the blanks to be filled in do not need to be in the same proportion. It is numbers, so we don't have to stick with two thirds. Um, and I will also note that we are approaching 10 minutes debate or discussion on this matter, and we do have another matter to discuss. I saw Mr. Kowalczyk first, so I will recognize him. Good, uh, Rick Kowalczyk, um, good try, but um, any set of numbers that isn't like one and 27 is imminently gameable, and uh, probably about half the people in this room can figure out how a slate even if you do 4 and 12, you can game it. 
Well, you can, yes, you can game it. This, the, the point though is, if it's a big, it requires a larger majority to game the system. And if it's a, if it's a big enough majority, then they should win it anyway. If 40% of the people who vote want, you know, whatever work on, on the ballot, they should get it, whether they, you know, whether everyone here agrees with them or not. For what purpose does the member rise? <laughs> Dara Koroti asking the four and six committee, have they cons even closer? All right. Dara Koroti asking the committee, have you considered the inevitability of multiple independent slates? I'm not talking coordinated action because two independent slates, each running four candidates, will have between the two of them 100% of the ballot, making it a partisan ballot under any circumstances that there are more than one slate. Yes, if you have multiple slates, you will have a partisan ballot. I'm, a, I'm a making. Yes, Mr. Stanley. <laughs> He's going to shut me down, folks. Kevin Stanley, I believe the charge to this committee was to discuss the technical aspects, and I do very much believe we are reaching the element of, of heavily substantive debate that is better taken up at the main meeting. Mr. Chairman, if you do, is the point of order well taken? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that we move on to the second item on the agenda for this committee. Is there any objection to moving on to EPH? Thank you. Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The chair recognizes Mr. Watt to give a presentation very quickly on the uh, procedure for EPH. There are 19 minutes left. Good morning, I'm Keith Watt. For those who don't remember from me, trying to make my quick exit. So, I'm the lead for EPH, and once we get our pre presentation up here, we have a little less time than what I thought we did, so I'm going to kind of blast through this. But what I really wanted to do was just give you an overview of how the system works, because it's gotten a reputation for being very complicated. And it's actually not. There's only one part of it that is new and different and weird. I'll explain that part to you. Once you understand the motivation behind that, I think it'll make a whole lot more sense to you where you're coming from. So EPH is just a way of tallying nominations that minimizes slight. It doesn't change what you nominate, how you nominate, or what you can nominate. Our whole goal behind this was to make it absolutely, I'll get up so I don't walk, I'm a teacher, so I walk around the classroom. So, is to make it so that you don't change, you the voter, don't change your Hugo voting behavior. That was one of our fundamental principles behind all of this. And as they point out, now I'm looking at the 2013 data that I'm going to show you in just a minute, but we were able to set it so that 15% of the nominators were able to take 100% of all the nomination slots. And of course, that's very similar to what we saw in 2015 today. What, when we were trying to find an answer to this, what we figured out, what the true cause of the problem was that we as fans nominate a wide diversity of works. And that's a feature, it's not a bug. It's something that we want to maintain. But because we're nominating all these very you know, low numbers of votes for individual works, a slate that has good discipline can put their 200 votes and dominate all of the rest of us. So once we recognized the problem, we started looking for a mechanism that would allow us to redirect that support from the works that didn't have a chance to begin with. So our guiding principle here was the Hugo Award should be representative of all of us, not just from you know, one part. So the way it works is it allows the least supported nominee to be eliminated from consideration. When we do that, voters are redirecting their support. So just, I'll go into this in detail, but let's say you've got five works on your ballot, and it turns out that your fourth one doesn't have a chance. Under the current system, that vote's just basically wasted. What happens under the new system is it's eliminated as though you never voted for it, and you now have more support for your remaining works. Now, we need a better name for this because this is just boring, but... Here's, we're calling it points right now. If you guys have a better name, please give it to us. So, that's something, yeah. So these points, this is the new part. This is the weird part. The points are our mechanism for redistributing that, that support. So in each category, you get one point. If you have five works on your nomination ballot, each work gets one-fifth of a point from you. All of those points then get added up together and that's the point total, which is kind of a measure of popularity, so a measure of support for it. 
if any of your nominees are eliminated, then the remaining nominees get the rest of your points. So if I had five, each got a fifth. If one gets eliminated, each gets a fourth. If one gets eliminated, now each gets a third, and so on and so on. So the key to EPH is this. Points do not eliminate anything. Points just determine who is eligible for elimination. Our current system has always been the works with the most support are the ones with the most nominations, and we keep that. So the number of nominations determine who is actually eliminated. And so, and this was part in our early discussions that was missed by some people. Since the works are getting more points over time, fandom is concentrating our support into the final, into the final ballot. So we are not a political movement. We are not interested in saying, oh, you're a slate, you're bad, you're out. We may have personal opinions about that, but that's not what we're here, that's not our place to make. What we want to do though, any set of nominees, whether they're from a slate or whatever, who tend to have both the same number of points and the same number of nominations, will tend to compete against each other. And so the way the slates are controlled is they end up competing against each other. And so those five works get eliminated to the most popular slate work. Because honestly, I'm not interested in keeping the slates off the ballot. They're fandom. They're part of us. If they have 20% of the electorate, they should have a slot. You know, that's how a fair, and no fair system is going to prevent that from happening. And so we explicitly designed that into the system. <laughs> no fair system. <laughs> Welcome to my world of captioning. If you want to have a laugh, watch Google and put on their, watch YouTube and put on auto captioning, but don't let your kids be around. The important thing here is that if there is no slate, if there's nothing that meets these conditions, EPH gives exactly the same results as the current system. It does no harm. So if you are a proponent of social situations, of the social solutions, that hey, it's people, not the system, I support that 100%. This gives us the, the safety net to make those solutions work. Okay, so here's how it works. Each category is a separate election. Mr. Watt. I just want to note that we have just under 14 minutes left. Okay, so we, we get through this and I think we'll probably just move on then. There's three phases to it then. I'm not going to go into detail about this. I'll do this on Sunday if we need to, okay? So here we, we are counting up the number of points and nominations from all the ballots. We find the two lowest point totals. Those are the two that are least supported. One of those is going to get eliminated. It may not be the one with the least number of points. We just pick the two that are there. And then of those two, the one with the fewest nominations is gone. And so we start from the bottom up until we've got our five final. Uh, tiebreakers, if we need it, we've just pulled that out of section 6.4. I'm not gonna take the time to deal with tiebreakers. Okay, so this is the current system. We took the 2013 data and came up with a statistical distribution that matched the nominations, and then I manually added 200 slate ballots to that. So everything below, everything in the bottom part is, is essentially real data, statistically generated. And then we've added the slates. As you see under the current system, we have lots of votes here from fandom at large, but the slates still win. They take 100% of the slot. Under, I'm gonna skip ahead and just show you how one round works. This is particularly when it's round five. The shorter the line, the fewer number of points they have. So here we've taken the two shortest bars. They have the least number of points. So this one had, number 24 had 23.58, number 19 had 22. Keep those in mind for just a minute. You see that number 24 had the most number of points. Point of personal privilege, could you switch to a boarding mic because you're cutting in and out? I'm cutting out, is that what you're saying? Cutting in and out, I don't know if it's because of the microphone or because you're not holding it in front of your mouth all the time. Just take, just, just take, take oh. cutting in and out. Oh, I see. All right, I need to hold it closer, is what he's saying. Okay, okay. sorry. Or Thank you. Better directionally coupled to your head. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, I need one of the, I need a, I need a Britney Spears mic this way. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so notice that number 24 has the most number of points. Now when we, so those are our two lowest, we choose, we look at their nominations now, and you see that number 24 actually has fewer nominations, it's the one that's eliminated. Because nominations should decide who the winner is from them. Okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through the rest of this. Here was the first combination of when the slates competed against each other, and you see that they will end up eliminating each other, so I'm just going to fast forward through all this. So the results, under the current nomination system, the five nominees are the slates. The slate sweeps the ballot. 